These are the profiles related to the infrastructure of the radiology department in an integrated enterprise. They deal with the business and data sharing solutions. This is the profile that addresses the problem of exchanging images via CD. Unfortunately, very few places have adopted this solution, and as we have talked about before in class, remains a huge headache for most PACS admins. I would add an additional benefit of reducing patient radiation exposure here. What happens if you can't get the patient's CT of the chest from a week ago done at Rural Analog General Hospital? Or you get the CD but you can't import it into your PAC system. Then the patient has to have another chest CT at your hospital. That's a lot of radiation just because you can't get the study from somewhere else or you can't import it correctly. The idea here is that if everyone used this IHE profile, then everyone's CD would work everywhere. The images could be reviewed on a web browser or at a diagnostic reading station or even printed if necessary. XDSIB provides a solution for publishing, finding, and retrieving imaging documents across a group of affiliated hospitals or an affiliated enterprise. Affiliated enterprises are hospitals or health systems that are working together for the benefit of a particular region. Penn Medicine is a good example of an affiliated enterprise. The concept for this profile is that documentation from different facilities should be easily shareable with all the enterprise affiliates. For example, if you're seeing an affiliated orthopedic doctor in his office for your broken ankle, he should be able to access your ER report from one hospital and your previous ankle x-rays and report from another hospital. This is a graphical representation of how documents from different facilities could be shared with the doctor's office. Teaching files are valuable training tools in radiology and other imaging specialties. Many residents are required to create and maintain teaching files, and many experienced practitioners keep files of interesting cases for their own reference and to share with colleagues. Participation in clinical trials is a growing need and both a potential source of revenue and a driver of quality improvement. In order to accomplish these tasks efficiently, a user must be able to flag appropriate images and add supplemental information, anonymize imaging studies, particularly in research trials, route the study to the appropriate destination, a teaching file system or a clinical trial repository. DICOM standards provide the essential mechanisms for performing these tasks. The teaching file will be a part of the PAX folder structure and something you will maintain as PAX admins. Most research departments have their own image document archive, and connecting to it is fairly simple. The research department archive server usually speaks and understands DICOM. Pretty simple diagram here. The images get retrieved to the reading station. The radiologist has the ability to save in a teaching file or export, export to the research department. Radiology information, including images and related reports, is accessible within the radiology department and between radiology and other departments within the hospital, such as pathology, surgery, and oncology. Non-radiology information, such as lab reports, may also be accessed if made available in a DICOM format. The improved throughput is the key benefit. The idea in this profile is to be able to search one PAX and get all the DICOM information in radiology, cardiology, and any other DICOM sources. But the industry has taken this a step further. The next generation of PAX systems is to have an enterprise-wide PAX instead of a bunch of PAX systems such as radiology PAX, cardiology PAX, OB PAX. At Hack General Hospital, we use AGFA Enterprise PAX. It has many more enterprise-wide features than a standard PAX system. For example, it will accept non-DICOM formats such as JPEG images. Most standard PACs only take DICOM images. It has the document scan software embedded in it, so instead of scanning documents and sending them to PACs, you simply scan them directly into the PACs. It has the voice recognition system built into it, so instead of having a separate system to integrate, the Enterprise PACs takes over that function. As current PAC systems age and need to be replaced, I would expect to see them replaced with enterprise-wide PAC systems. I like that IHE does the testing for you. Testing new interfaces and new connections between two systems can take months to accomplish. If they do that for you, it saves you time and headaches. 
This depicts an enterprise PACS capable of serving radiology images and data to different departments. All systems can do this already. The next big trick is to turn those arrows around and have all those different departments with very different data types send to one enterprise-wide PACS. That's what an enterprise PACS aspires to be, and they're going to need a lot of more people to run them. Aetna, or ATNA, provides institutions with a mechanism to consolidate audit trail events on user activity across several imaging and information systems throughout the enterprise systems interconnected in a secure manner. The radiology option defines further requirements for the Aetna profile which are specified for this domain. The radiology audit trail option defines the specific requirements of the IHE radiology transactions for supporting the IHE ITI audit trail and node authentication profile. This option deals largely with the details of the recorded audit event transaction in the IHE ITI technical framework. The option details the required audit events for each of the IHE radiology transactions based on different trigger events. We haven't talked a lot about security and audit requirement, mostly because it's a whole class you will take next year. In simple terms, there are rules for who you give system access to, what they can do in the PAC system, and all that has to be tracked and audited on a regular basis. This profile gives you a plan to do your audits. The user logs in, and if they have a trusted certificate, we'll talk about that in the security class, and their identity is confirmed, they get into the system. If they don't have correct logging credentials, or they don't have a trusted certificate, that attempted connection gets logged in the audit repository. The charge posting integration profile specifies the exchange of information from department ordering systems to billing systems regarding charges associated with particular procedures. It also defines the communication between patient registration system, billing systems, about patient demographics, accounts, insurance, and guarantors. The charge posted transaction contains all of the required procedure data to generate a claim. The procedure information is obtained from acquisition modalities via transactions that are copied from the iCare workflow integration profile. The goal of including this transaction in the IHE technical framework is to standardize the charge posted transaction to a billing system, thus reducing system interface installation time. The result is the billing system will receive more, compl more complete, timely, and accurate data. This is a classic example of how IHE borrows the best idea from one system workflow and uses it in others. Uh, unless you want to work for free, timely and accurate billing is important. Notice throughout the workflow, workflow data is transmitted to the billing system until it has a complete record to bill from. For radiology billing, they need patient information, procedure information, and the exam report before they can issue a bill. Also, there are two separate bills in radiology. The bill from the hospital for doing the procedure, and a bill from the radiologist for reading the exam. These are often called technical fees and professional fees. The technical fee is the charge for doing the exam. The professional fee is the charge for reading the exam. The cross-community access for imaging profile supports the means to query and retrieve patient-relevant medical image data held by other communities. A community is defined as a coupling of facilities or enterprises that have agreed to work together using a common set of policies for the purpose of sharing clinical information via an established mechanism. Facilities and enterprises may host any type of healthcare application such as an EHR, PHR, etc. Such communities may be XDS affinity domains, which define image sharing using the XDSI profile. This profile addresses sharing between such communities. The XCA I profile extends the IT infrastructure XCA profile for imaging. XCA provides access to diagnostic reports and imaging manifests. XCAI provides access to the imaging objects referenced in the manifest. In other words, one sends you the report, one sends you the actual image. This is data sharing on a larger scale. Let's say Penn Medicine doesn't have a good pediatric program, and rather than start their own, it's easier or more cost-effective to enter into a health information exchange with Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. Each organization keeps their own brand identity, but it gives Penn Med a world-class pediatric service, and CHOP gets to extend their brand out into other communities. To make this work for the patient, they will need to share imaging data and the cross-community access for imaging is a profile that gives you the plan to make this work. 
These are the actors and transactions involved in sharing imaging reports between two communities using a gateway. Imaging object change management specifies how one actor communicates local changes applied on an existing imaging object to other actors that manage copies of the modified imaging objects in their own local systems. The supported changes include object rejection due to quality or patient safety reasons, correction of incorrect modality workload entry selection, and expiration of objects due to data retention requirements. It defines how changes are captured and how to communicate these changes. This profile addresses the problem of what happens when the CT tech discovers registration misspelled the patient's name. The CT tech wants to correct the name on the CT scanner and the CT post-processing workstation, but how do those changes get propagated to all the other systems? This is what this profile is used for, to have a plan to make the change match in all the other systems. The key benefits are a simple, consistent synchronization mechanism and progressive enhancement of the workflow. In other words, the change can happen at any point in the workflow, and the change flows both upstream and downstream from that point. This is an example of how a change to patient demographics could be requested and approved, and then the correction updates the data at other points. I like how the risk admin in the lower left corner and the PACS admin in the upper right corner have to approve the patient info update. It's not a good idea to let techs change patient data on their own. Here are the trial profiles. As such, they are under construction. I don't have any affected systems or benefits to share with you. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in class.